what you're seeing are scenes of a film shown tonight at the New Hanover County Library. Dr. Robert Toplin, a history professor at UNCW, produced the film. It's called The War to End All Wars, and it takes you down the long and complicated road to World War I. Toplin says he hopes to breathe new life into what some people regard as old and stale. We're trying to show that history is very much alive with controversy and debate, and that some subject as old as World War I can be very, very dynamic and interesting. The major question the film raises is, was it really necessary for America to have been in World War I in the first place? After seeing the film, reaction was mixed. They shouldn't have been in the war. Uh, we have a stake in the world. It's, it's just not us all by ourselves, and that's the way it is. I f fully agree with uh, President Wilson. Toplin says he hopes to get the film shown on PBS later this year, and the history department at UNCW plans to use it as a teaching aid in their classrooms. Toplin says by bringing the history alive, it will have a much greater impact than if it were left on the pages of history books. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Folks in the Castle Hain area came out in force to protect the river they say is so much a part of their lives. They say they swim and boat in the area where the waste will be dumped. And they want to know why their area of the river has been chosen for the plant. Officials from the Environmental Management Commission were there to answer their questions. This was their message. Uh, we had no intention of, uh, of, of allowing the Northeast Cape Fear River or any other waters of the state to be uh, severely degraded. I work for Corning Glass Works. We but many residents didn't feel that their river would stay clean. One even suggested that if the water was so pure, the developers of North Chase should keep it. If that river is so pure, why don't they make a pool out there in, in trash farm where it is and put it, put it in there and put fish in there? I ain't have a fish farm out there. <laughs> county engineer Ed Hilton was also on hand to remind folks that a countywide sewage system will be in effect in 1994. And at that time, the developers of North Chase could hook into that system, and that would provide a much cleaner waste. But the residents say they're going to take some legal action. They say they just hope it won't be too late to save the river they so dearly love. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. This Yellow Pages ad claims that you can find anything you need if you simply let your fingers do the walking. But local members of GROW, a gay and lesbian support group, say the pages don't meet their needs. They attempted to place an ad in the pages with the words gay and lesbian included. The publishers refused to print that ad, claiming that a majority of their readers would find those two words offensive. We have a, a strong feeling that a majority of our readers would find those words objectionable were they to see them in our advertising. We feel that we have provided uh, a book which is useful and helpful and which does not contain in it anything which the majority of the public would object to. Leo Teachout, a spokesman for GROW, says this policy is just plain discrimination. I see it as discriminatory. Uh, I see it as uh, censorship, as a clear-cut censorship issue. I think it's terribly naive and silly and for a communications company that does not want to communicate uh, a specific need or a specific service, it's laughable. Teach Out wants to know why gay and lesbians were singled out when ads for places like massage parlors were still included. The, 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 the very first word in, in Bell South's yellow pages, abortion, uh, and they don't seem to have any trouble with that word. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6.
If you don't like the bumpy, dusty ride down unpaved streets, you soon won't be bothered by that problem in Wilmington. In 1978, the city set out to pave all of its dirt streets, which added up to be 23 miles, about the distance from Wilmington to Burgall. Here's how they're progressing. Uh, so far, we're down to uh, about five and a half miles remaining. We do have to add approximately another five miles due to the uh, annexed areas. Penny says the cost of road construction has skyrocketed since the program started. He says so far the city has spent over six and a half million dollars and before the project is finished they will spend another five million. He says he gets a lot of calls from folks who are upset that the streets in their own neighborhoods weren't paved first. We try to, to look at the maintenance cost, the number of maintenance complaints, the volume of number of houses on the houses or businesses on the street, uh, the overall traffic pattern of the city, you know, will it help the traffic flow. Penny says the project is scheduled to be finished in 1995, but he points out that as the city grows, so does the number of unpaved streets. So, he says, they'll just keep paving mile by mile until the job is finished. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Members of Wilmington's gay population say area residents have become more hostile to them since the introduction of AIDS. There's definitely been a tremendous increase in the amount of hostility towards gay and lesbian people in this area. Uh, we get some calls that say um, that the way to cure AIDS is to kill faggots. Uh, we didn't get used to get calls like that. Teachout says the armed services discriminate against people with AIDS. The services require an AIDS test for anyone who wants to enlist in the military. One of the tests that was added was to determine if they had the HTLV3 virus present in their body. Uh, if that was the case, then that did constitute a bar from them entering the military service. Teachout says the test is really used to keep homosexuals out of the Army. Uh, the military assured us that uh, this, would not, this would never be used to um, to uh, discriminate or keep people out of the military would not be used as a marker test for homosexuality. Teachout also claims the insurance industry discriminates. Starting in February, 65% of life insurance companies in North Carolina will ask you if you have AIDS or have been exposed to the virus. If the answer is yes, no insurance. Despite the discrimination claims, AIDS has drawn the homosexual community closer together. Here at David's Lounge, a drag show was held over the weekend to raise money for AIDS. But the heterosexual population is concerned as well, and often without reason. The American Red Cross is having problems getting people to donate blood. Dr. Henry Jordan says people are afraid that they will get AIDS from donating. He says that's simply not true. There has been so much concern that there is talk of a nationwide directed donor program. That means only friends and relatives would donate blood for you when you need it. Jordan says that program could be devastating and could cost many lives. It would be disastrous for our program. Uh, roughly half the blood that the Red Cross sends out to the hospitals and clinics that's used uh, is used in people who didn't schedule this use. They may have been struck by a car or some other accident. They didn't plan it. There would have been no time for it. Jordan says it's equally safe to receive blood. Each pint is checked for the AIDS virus before it is used. In North and South Carolina last year, over 166,000 units were collected. Only 44 tested positive. <laughs> Officials at the YMCA ran an article in last month's newsletter reassuring members that they could not catch AIDS by swimming in their pool. They say they printed the article after several people refused to swim in the pool because they were afraid they would catch it. Officials say the number of AIDS cases will triple in 1986. And as that number grows, so does the likelihood that it will affect each of our lives in some way. All those involved agree that the key to coping with this problem is education. Jackson Cherry, News Probe 6.
this is hard to bear my arms and legs scattered everywhere songs like this one in prayers were part of the vigil held by the pro-lifers one of their spokesmen mary Kay mason said she had an abortion herself and that this vigil was an attempt to keep people from making what she called a mistake i am sorry for what i did and there's no way I can get my baby back. I murdered my only child, the only child I'll ever be able to conceive I killed. And I'll tell you, that's a horrible thing to have to live with. Across town at UNCW, the Wilmington chapter of NOW held a meeting to promote pro-choice. During her speech, Jean Amelaine blasted the pro-life group. What the anti-choice fanatics cannot accept is a 13-year-old decision of the highest court of the land that says that the Constitution of the United States, that document of freedom in a free land, includes the right of a woman to make her own decision. As she was making these comments, members of the pro-life group trooped into the room. They sat quietly and listened. Mason wept during much of the meeting. There are sailboats and fishing boats, big boats and small, mackerel boats and speed boats. In fact, I couldn't count them all. Area boat dealers brought them by dozens to the mall with hopes that after people see them, there wouldn't be one left by the fall. All the local dealers will benefit from the show probably in March or April. Most of the shoppers now are looking for the boats that they plan to purchase later on in the season. Some folks say things aren't made as good as they used to be, but people we talk to say this year's quality suits them to a T. Yeah, they've come out with a lot of new uh, motors here with different horsepower and things. You know, I think it's been a great improvement. Owning a boat can be lots of fun, what with the beach and all the sun, but some folks say it's not all it's cracked up to be. There's a lot more to it than just sailing on the seas. If a lot of people think they want one, they really don't, you know, after they find that out after they buy it. Why, why is that? Is there a lot of maintenance and stuff to the boat? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of uncomfortable fishing trips. So go out and take a look. Just think of all the fun you'd have with a line and a hook. You'll also save some money from not taking the ferry. For News Center 6, this is Jackson Cherry. Flames were shooting from the top of McIntyre Motor Services on 5th and Wright as firefighters from the Wilmington Fire Department arrived on the scene. And when we arrived, the roof was on fire and it was on fire all over. Firefighters fought against brisk winds to confine the blaze to the building. They were also afraid a gas tank located in the back of the building would blow. But firefighters were able to keep it cool by continually shooting water into the part of the building near the pump. 79-year-old Thomas McIntyre watched as his entire life's work went up in smoke. He leaned on his niece for support. He says he lost many things that can never be replaced. I had the hobbies in there, music, a carpentry shop, all my mechanical tools collected for a lifetime, electronic tools, now, I'm just gutted. Firemen shot gallons of water through the windows of the building, and they also used aerial ladders to shoot water through the roof. The building was a total loss. The cause of the fire is under investigation. So Thomas McIntyre stands and watches his building go up in flames. But not only is his building gone, but his whole way of life as well. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6.
The house is located at 1614 Market Street. It would be used to house children from the ages of 6 to 18, who Methodist church officials say have no place to live and need a positive neighborhood atmosphere. Tonight, those officials assured Forest Hill homeowners and city council that the home would have a positive influence on their neighborhood and that their property values would remain the same. There is a need in New Hanover County. Many of our students, when they have to be placed in group homes, are set as far away as Kinston or Fayetteville, with these being the closest group homes to New Hanover County. But some residents of Forest Hills say they simply don't want the home in their neighborhood. They say they fear for the safety of their children. Um, we do not feel like the home is harmonious uh, with the existing single family uh, homes in the area. We feel that it's a professional institution uh, with professional parents. Uh, we are very concerned about council granting an exception uh, to single family residential zoning areas such as ours. Uh, we're concerned that this may encourage groups in the future. Residents in the Forest Hills neighborhood who oppose the group home say the deck was stacked against them at last night's city council meeting. They say council members already had their mind made up to support the home before they heard arguments from their side. We thought we had it pretty well covered as to um, why the house wouldn't be applicable for their use and, and councilmen just had their minds made up before they even heard us. So no matter how much work we did, they already knew what they were going to say. They those residents say they think the decision was pure politics. After all, they say, how would it look for a council member to oppose what they call an orphan home with a little religion? But now they say they're left with a political school. And they say they're afraid some dangerous children will be allowed to live in the home. I just know that the mothers are upset and the fathers are upset too. You don't know a violent child can still be down there. We don't know. And so I know I would be anxious to meet the parents who are going to be down there. You know, I want to know who's going to be down there, how, how much control they're going to have over the children, and what's going to happen. Residents who oppose the home say city council hasn't heard the last of them. They say they plan to take some legal action to stop it from happening. But if it does, they say they'll call council members at any sign of trouble. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Great. The play's called Something Afoot, and it's a murder mystery. Tonight they're having a dress rehearsal, and I thought you might like to come along. Come on, let's go find a seat. As you can probably tell by the costumes and set, the play takes us back to the year 1935, to the home of Lord Dudley Rancor. He was just murdered moments ago, and now it's our task to find out who the murderer or murderers may be. It's kind of fun playing amateur Sherlock Holmes, but I'm already confused. Well, maybe it was Flint, the caretaker. You know, he is kind of scruffy looking. Or maybe it's Mrs. Tweed. You know, those grandma types aren't always what they're cracked up to be. Or maybe it was Lady Manly Prowl. Or I know who it was, it was the maid. Or was it? It seems they don't give the murderer away in dress rehearsals. Oh, I know, I've got connections. I'll ask the director, McCall Thompson. Okay, now was it the butler? No, the butler didn't do it. That's, that was one of our things that we used in our advertising. The butler's always accused of doing it, but the butler did not do it. Oh well, so it remains a mystery. So how will we ever find out who the murderer is? Elementary, we'll just have to go see the play. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Oh, 
Area bar owners say they're losing many would-be customers to South Carolina bars. They say many people are crossing the border to take advantage of the extra hours South Carolina bars can sell beer and liquor. In the past, all South Carolina bars had to close at midnight on Saturday night, giving North Carolina the advantage at least one night during the week. But now South Carolina bar owners can buy a special permit, which allows them to stay open late on Saturday night as well. Some area bar owners say it would make them more competitive if they could stay open later. A lot of times on the weekends, people don't get started until later at night. So um, they would probably like to stay out later because they get such a late start. But generally, I like it when the people are starting to have a good time. I like to see them be able to stay out a little later. Most people we talked to said 1 o'clock was just too early to close. Um, usually I go to Myrtle Beach because they stay open until I guess 3 or 4 in the morning. But uh, around here, they close too early. Uh, you close a restaurant at 1 o'clock. By the time you're ready to leave, it's 2 o'clock and it, there's no place to go. you got to go home. There's no place to buy beer. You can't even buy beer at that time. Area law enforcement officers are concerned about the people driving back to North Carolina after drinking in South Carolina bars. Area bar owners say they'll use this concern to reinforce their continuing effort to stay open later. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. At this time, we'll take one minute to observe and remember the astronauts who gave the ride to the place this week. Students at Sunset Elementary School and many others in the area bowed their head in a minute of thoughtful silence in tribute to the seven Americans who lost their lives in the space shuttle. These children felt especially close to this tragedy because they were supposed to receive a special lesson from the first teacher in space, Krista McCullough. Section. Today her lesson where went on been, without her. Where we're going and she plans to in the second section where we've been, where we're going and why she was going to show different parts of the space shuttle. And at UNCW, more than 200 people joined in a solemn salute to the Challenger crew, complete with a color guard salute. University students and officials spoke in their memory. And at A&T University, they mourned the death of South Carolina native Ron McNair, who attended that university. They said he was a man with humble beginnings who reached great heights. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, who also attended that university, paid tribute. But perhaps President Reagan summed it up best when he said the best way to commemorate our seven Challenger heroes is to continue in our conquest of space. Jackson Cherry, New Center 6. About 60% of all cargo that passes through the state ports in Wilmington is imports. That probably comes as no surprise to you if you think about all the made in Japan or Taiwan labels that you see every day. Our area and others in the country are flooded with imports. Last year the trade deficit widened to a record level. Nationally we buy overseas $148 billion more than we sell. That's up a record 20% from 1984. So why do we have a trade deficit? There are many reasons, but experts say the three biggest are a strong dollar overseas. That makes American goods more expensive. Foreign government subsidies. Foreign governments split the cost with their companies, making it less expensive for foreign manufacturers. And cheap labor. In countries like Taiwan, people will work for as little as $5 a day. Gail Johnson with the World Trade Association say imports make it very difficult for local industry to compete. He uses the chemical industry as an example. Uh, there are companies that uh, are producing chemicals here that the plants that are producing them overseas, which in some cases even went over and set up and offer technical assistance to these same companies, produce the same product 
and those companies are subsidized by the government, which means that the head to head you can't face it. Johnson says local manufacturers are accustomed to trading locally, and they don't think in terms of global trade. He says only three to four percent of all businesses export their products. Johnson says you can do your part by buying only American-made goods. He says if the deficit continues to grow as it is now, many area jobs will be lost. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. The New Hanover County Commission recently voted to do away with the County Airport Commission, leaving the management of the airport in the hands of the county commissioners themselves. But Commissioner Jack Dolan says the airport doesn't get the guidance it needs from the county commissioners. So tonight he proposed that an airport study committee be formed to take a look at the problems the airport faces. But the commission voted by a three to two margin not to allow the study. With Commissioners Dolan and O'Neill supporting the plan and Commissioners Barfield, O'Shields and Retchen voting against. Dolan says he doesn't understand their opposition. Uh, I'm not asking for anything outrageous. I'm, I'm, I'm asking the uh, commissioners to approve a, a group of people who will take a fresh look at the airport uh, from start to finish. The airport is the, the single most positive economic development uh, operation we have here in the county. The commission also voted to prohibit all billboards along I-40 in the county. They will, however, allow companies to have a small sign out front to identify their businesses. Buck Shields was the only commissioner to vote against this proposal. And some residents of the Castle Hain community asked the county commissioners to help them get the waters of the Cape Fear River near their home reclassified. They say a higher rating would protect the water from pollution. The commissioners voted unanimously to support their efforts. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. zoning requirements on it that we don't feel like that uh, we had been notified and uh, given any chance to have a, our, our view felt. Here's how the situation unfolds. In 1975, the New Hanover County Commissioners granted a special use permit for a nursing home to be operated in the house. The zoning at that time was residential. In 1982, the city's planning department changed the zoning to O&I, Office and Institutional, at that time, they put notices in the paper and placed a sign out front informing neighbors of the proposed zoning change. Hearing no protest, the area was changed to O&I. In early 1985, the nursing home went out of business and the house went up for sale. In late 1985, the State Department of Corrections picked up the lease on the house. No neighbors were notified and no public hearing was held. The State Department is not required to notify the public. The halfway house moved to Wrightsville Avenue after outgrowing their present facility in the Sunset Park neighborhood. The residents say they plan to take some legal action to keep the inmates out of their neighborhood. But the State Department of Corrections say they've done nothing wrong and they plan to stay there whether the neighbors like it or not. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. This beach is empty now, but in a couple of months it will be crowded with tourists. And with the tourists comes trash and lots of it. Thompson Island officials say they don't have anywhere to put the garbage this year. Their landfill is nearly full. They say they presented this problem to the Pender County Commissioners at least five years ago. And even though the commission says they'll build an incinerator or landfill in the next couple of years, Thompson Island residents must bear the expense in the meantime. 
Residents there say they're also concerned that the majority of the commissioners seem to favor building the incinerator in either Rocky Point or Burgall. They will then have to pay to transport the trash. All we're asking is a place where we wouldn't have to go to the double expense of hauling garbage and trash to Burgall. Something close where everybody benefits by it. We don't want anything for nothing. All we want is a fair shake. It's long been a complaint in the eastern part of Pender County that the county commissioners seem to be more concerned with the western part of the county. Pagliotti says that's the case here. They just got something against the Topsail Township. That's all to it. Gordon Jones, who serves as chairperson of the county commissioners, refused to comment on the claim today. To pay for the trash disposal, Pagliotti says town taxes will have to be raised. That will be the first increase in seven years. Some area residents say they're bitter towards the commissioners. It's all taxation with no representation. Because I had bitched and bitched at the commissioners before and uh, doesn't do anything. And some residents say they plan to show their disapproval at the polls in the upcoming county commission race. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. More than 27,000 Americans suffer from oral cancer, yeah, and each year many of those people die. But Dr. Gregory DeGroat says you can protect yourself by having regular examinations. Early detection is, as with any cancer, with oral cancer, is very important. A screening test for oral cancer was held at the medicine shop in Wilmington. Doctors there say there are certain signs to look for such as sores that fail to heal in your gums and mouth, or lumps or swelling there, difficulty in chewing food, restricted movement of your jaw, or discomfort with your dentures. They also say the disease can strike the young as well as the old. Dr. DeGroat says oral cancer is one of the easiest cancers to cure if detected early. He recommends an examination twice a year. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Local obstetricians pay higher malpractice insurance rates than any other type of doctor, and those rates are continuing to rise. They will pay 50 percent more this year than they did last year. Dr. David Mason says delivering babies is a big part of his livelihood. He says he delivers about 150 a year, but if the cost of malpractice insurance continues to rise, he may be forced to stop. We're all worried about this. And if the rates keep going up at the current levels, uh, it won't be many years before we have to make a decision whether to continue practicing without insurance, which is a, a great personal risk, or just to stop practicing obstetrics. The reason for the high rates is the majority of all malpractice suits are filed against obstetricians. Mason says there are two basic reasons why. First, there is no statute of limitations. Parents can file suit against obstetricians until the child is 21 years old. Second, because parents expect perfection. Mason says although most babies are born perfect, there are no guarantees. And many times it's no one's fault, it's just mother nature. Mason says if he and his fellow obstetricians are forced to stop delivering babies, residents at local hospitals will start. Many of those residents, although they are qualified, don't have the specialized training obstetricians have. Mason says if rates continue to rise, he and other obstetricians will be forced to make some very tough decisions. Decisions he hopes won't leave newborns and their mothers without the proper care. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. The Northeast Cape Fear River that runs through Castle Hain is a big part of the lives of the people who live there. But they're afraid their river is about to be ruined. 
Owners of the North Chase development have been issued a permit to dump one million gallons of treated waste into the river each day. Before the state issued the permit, they placed a small legal ad like this one in the Star News. Hearing no protests, they issued the permit. But residents say they didn't see that small ad. And they say before an action like this one is taken, more efforts should be made to inform them. They should do uh, more than that. It should be a, a larger ad in the paper or, or, uh, or a sign near the site, I think, would be good. Like. All state and local agencies are required to place legal ads before issuing any permits. Officials at the Wilmington Star News say they offer their lowest advertising rates to these agencies. Don Whitworth, publisher of the Star, says the ads are big enough and that many folks just use them as an excuse. We uh, alphabetize uh, in our newspaper the way in which you can easily turn to that page and read those advertisements. So if there's difficulty in people not seeing them, uh, I would suggest that, you know, they need to look a little bit harder because they're there. Residents at Castle Haines say there is very little chance the permit issued to the North Chase developers will be canceled. But they say they hope local newspapers will make legal ads more noticeable in the future so they'll be less likely to miss things affecting their lives. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Greenfield Lake is polluted, not only with the algae that grows on it, but with the trash that people throw into it. To help solve the problem, every year these floodgates are opened, and much of the lake is drained into the Cape Fear River. Once the level is down, trash along the shore can be picked up, and it causes a little of the algae to die. The Parks and Recreation Service says the project isn't costing you any extra money. This is a part of our normal maintenance, so the, the cost really is just the, the use of the crews that work around Greenfield uh, year-round anyway, and because the, as far as the water is just opening the floodgates and let that run into the river. Greenfield Lake serves as home to many species of fish and wildlife. Courtney says draining the lake won't affect them. There's no problem with it because there's a main creek that runs in the middle of Greenfield and all the fish uh, go into that area. We've had that question asked a lot and we've had the wildlife people come down and do testing after the water gets back in and there's no problem. The fish are still there. They'll be there when the lake is back up to its normal level. Officials say they finished draining the lake this year. Now rainwater will fill it back up. Courtney says the lake should be back up to its normal level by the Azalea Festival. He says it should be a little cleaner so it will be more enjoyable for tourists, the residents, and the wildlife here. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. The middle school concept will change grade distribution at New Hanover County Schools. Currently, children in grades 1 through 6 attend the same school, then 7 through 9 go together, then grades 10 through 12. Under the new plan, the divisions would fall like this, 1st through 5th grades in the same school, then 6th through 8th, and 9th through 12th. Dr. Richard Flynn says the change is designed to meet the needs of kids in grades 5 through 9. He says it has many advantages. It makes a lot more sense to put a sixth grader with an eighth grader than it does a, uh, a seventh grader with a ninth grade, and that's just in total human development, educational development. The concept will cause a shortage of classrooms on the high school level, so Dr. Flynn says additions to Laney High School are probable. He also says the plan will call for total redistricting. Well, it, it, it's inconvenient, and you know it causes some upheaval at the time, but in a long-range uh, plan, it, it's a much better organization. School board members asked Dr. Flynn to work up a report detailing the cost of the plan as soon as possible. From there, the plan will go to the county commissioners, and then public hearings will be held. If the plan is accepted, it will take at least five years to implement. Flynn says the current grade distribution is based on available space and not education. He says junior high age students are at a very critical stage of development and that this change could make an important difference in their lives. 
Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. Twelve months and two million dollars later, the first Union Bank building on Front Street in Wilmington held its grand opening today. The building has been remodeled by a Charlotte-based development firm. It will serve as office space for 250 area business people. In downtown Wilmington, many buildings like the old Manor Theater here stand deserted. Most of the city's development is moving away from this area. So why choose downtown Wilmington? We like the river. We like what it's doing for the city. We like the economy, we like the banking network that you have in the city. So we feel like it's a matter of time before this city really takes off and we want to be a part of it. And County Commissioner Joe Barfield says it often takes out of town developers to open the eyes of area residents. To have a company out of Charlotte to come in and invest in our downtown area, because a lot of times the people from away can see a lot more than we can. you can see about your own home. And, and I understand that quite a few businesses are planning to move into this building. The developers of the First Union building say they feel downtown Wilmington is a perfect location. They say they can offer the most modern facilities and still maintain a sense of history. And also further evidence that interest may be increasing in downtown development is the proposed Hotel Convention Center. Jackson Cherry, News Center 6. From time to time, whales try to swim up on dry land. One did this afternoon at Carolina Beach. Nightside reporter Jackson Cherry and photographer Mark Shaw were there. The whale was found on the shore at Carolina Beach about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Scientists say it was a Gervais beaked whale. The mammal was 12 and a half feet long, weighed about 1,000 pounds, and was estimated to be a little over a year old. Scientists aren't sure why it beached. Many things can cause a stranding. One of the most common is just the animal gets sick. It comes into inshore water so that it's easier for it to get up to breathe. Um, the more sickly it gets, the far farther inshore it goes, and then eventually the tide goes out and the animal's left above the high tide line. The plan was to keep the whale alive until high tide tonight and then put it back into the ocean. Scientists and area residents who came to help the whale worked all afternoon to keep it alive. I think just love of all life um, brings you to where there's trouble. If there's anything you think you can do, you just go there. But despite their efforts, about 6.30, the whale died. Okay, he has not breathed in about the last five or six minutes, and we're getting no response from the people. The body of the whale will be taken to the Marine Resources Center, an area scientists will perform an autopsy. But loading the body onto a truck took the efforts of everyone there. One, two, three, go. Oh, God, it. Scientists say they should have the results of the autopsy in a couple of days. Jackson Cherry with photographer Mark Shaw for News Center 6.